welcome back to the Repro Review Show. I am your host, Doug, and today we are exploring the line between memes, fan service, and reality as we review our first Nintendo 64 game on this show, Waluigi's Taco Stand. Ever since Mario Tennis for the Nintendo 64, Waluigi has been a permanent fixture in the Nintendo universe. Often the brunt of the joke, he's only ever been an extra player in group games with no real franchise to call his own. Wario even has games of his own, and Waluigi isn't even playable in Super Smash Bros. But there were jokes on forums going back as far as 2002 that Waluigi had a cancelled game called Waluigi's Taco Stand for the Nintendo 64. Must have been some deep cut in jokes because I have never heard anything about this before now. But clearly there was a fan who wanted to take this joke to the next level. A ROM hacker going by Kays, or um, maybe Kaze? made a working ROM hack of Super Mario 64 of an actual functional version of Waluigi's Taco Stand. There was even a whole event where Kaze released a fake, previously unreleased trailer for the game on YouTube and claimed to have found a one-of-a-kind box copy of the game. But yeah, it's, it's all part of the joke. Where Nintendo cut our emotionally stunted lunatic short, the fans stepped up and gave him a game of his very own. The story is that Waluigi was gambling last night and he didn't know his limit and he did not play within it. So without any money, he isn't able to pay his rent to his Koopa landlord. So he's being put to work to earn some cash and begins his day at the taco stand. And that's it. After that, it's all about making tacos. Waluigi's taco stand looks and feels like Mario 64, but is far more simplistic in its design. The hub world is not a place that you can control other than scrolling through text. The levels are sandbox areas that you enter several times, and again, like Mario 64. But these levels are far smaller and much more simple in design. The really clever level design of the original game is not so present, so we get more or less the bare minimum of designs and challenges. It's all pretty rudimentary and feels like it could have been designed by a kid, or at least a newcomer to the world of hacking. Granted, I have no idea the challenge of reworking the assets of a 3D game. This is a much newer playing field than that of 2D Mario hacks, and requires a different way of thinking when it comes to level design. Even then, this seems fairly straightforward compared to other Mario 64 hacks that I've seen. Also, I don't think the camera is used to its fullest potential here, as far as like telling the actual story goes. Maybe this is my overly cinematic mind, or my being spoiled by modern video game storytelling, but I just found the directing of these portions lacking in clarity. But I also acknowledge that this is likely easier said than done. So the game is pretty straightforward. Goombas, Koopas, Monkeys, and even Womps want tacos. And since Waluigi serves only the freshest of ingredients, he goes out to harvest the ingredients for every taco ordered. From the fields, it plays very much like Mario 64. Waluigi handles just like Mario. He's quick, he's agile, he can climb trees and do all of Mario's jumps. It's basically a sprite swap, even though I know technically these aren't sprites. The bulk of the game is in these various taco worlds. There's the Taco Fields, Taco Island, Taco Canyon, and best of all, Taco Volcano. So a character gives you their order, and your job is to gather those ingredients, and only those ingredients. If you pick up anything that they did not order, you have to do the level again. As far as how many of any single item you can get, that doesn't matter. Just make sure that it's only the correct ingredients. And you know what? I get it. People have strong opinions about their tacos. If I get something on my taco that I didn't ask for, I am going to send it back. So what I'm basically trying to say is, this is the most realistic Mario game ever made. After you gather all of the ingredients, you press start, return to the taco stand, and the customer leaves satisfied. Then you start on the next order. It's extremely straightforward. Unlike Mario, Waluigi does not take any damage. He is invincible. This actually has some precedent, as Wario, in many of his games, doesn't take any damage either. Things can happen to him, like he gets squished and burnt, but he doesn't lose a life. Same here. You can enjoy all the sounds that Waluigi makes as he gets bashed, squashed, and burnt. When Shigeru Miyamoto spoke about Super Mario 64's success, he said that he wanted the very act of moving Mario to be fun. I do believe that that wound up being the case, and because of that, Waluigi's taco stand must be fun, right? It is, but it's really easy. Like, really easy. 
and short. As I mentioned, Waluigi doesn't take any damage, so the stakes aren't particularly high. The worst thing is if you get the wrong taco ingredients, and then you have to do the level over. But that's not really that big a deal. There are four stages, each with several challenges to complete, except the last one which you only have one challenge. And then that's it. The game is done. You pay your rent and then you win. You've staved off homelessness for one more month. Hmm, I guess this is just like real life, isn't it? Ugh. From start to finish it can take about 45 minutes, maybe even less. It took me a bit more than that, but I was really taking my time and dragging my heels for the sake of getting the footage. It's really easy. Experienced Mario 64 players will just breeze through it. It's so easy that I would actually say that it's great for young kids to get used to 3D Mario games. Mario 64 gets pretty hard, while Luigi's Taco Stand doesn't. I bet a kid could get through this game in one or two sittings and feel some satisfaction when beating it. Personally, I didn't really feel like I accomplished anything. But what the game lacks in challenge and immersion, it does at least have in personality. This is one where you need to appreciate the novelty of the idea and the fact that somebody actually committed to making it. And if you find some satisfaction in putting Waluigi through the ringer just to serve up some tacos, then you know what, it can be fun too. I mean, just look at him go. I also learned that Goombas are actually made of beef. Every time you squash a Goomba, taco beef comes out. But wait a minute. Sometimes the Goombas ask for beef in their tacos. Oh no. Do they know? So many fun ones. Often, climbing a ledge was a little off, like there was another layer between you and the ground. It's a bit amusing and thankfully doesn't lead to many problems, but it just looks kind of funny. There's also this time I fell through this piranha plant and right back into the ground level and, and yeah, it was kind of annoying, but I'm just glad I didn't fall into a void or something because that could have happened. I also had a blast trying to keep this lava dinosaur under control. It wasn't that bad once I was on it, but it seemed to be programmed to go where I go, and as you can see, he has some serious abandonment issues and causes problems for everyone. The glitch that was the biggest problem was when I tried to get the winged cap. Two times it crashed the game. So that sucked. But the good news is, the game auto-saved all my progress and I didn't miss a beat once restarting, so not actually that big a deal. Waluigi's Taco Stand is only a moderately fun game but mostly comes across as an amusing novelty project rather than an actual full game. While I don't see myself coming back to it often, it is worth a playthrough because it made me chuckle quite a few times. Though it is up to you if you want to shell out the money for an actual cartridge. And after all said and done, I kind of have a craving for tacos. So in the end, I have to give Waluigi's Taco Stand 3 out of 5 Flying Sombreros. That is a game worth playing. Thanks so much for watching the Repro Review Show. We will see you next time.